I was just kind of browsing, and these are some of the questions that recently teens have asked on the internet about uh, God and the Bible. We're going to get to these in a minute. Uh, but, but what's interesting is we've looked more at science and we've looked at the Bible. Um, I think what we've learned is that science and faith don't have to be as separated as people think. Right? You can be a good scientist and still follow Jesus, have a strong faith. Asking how God's creation works, like we do in science class, is a great thing for our faith because it helps us understand a little bit more about the God who made everything. Amen? Amen. Now, while all of that sounds good, you might still be thinking this. And I know there's some of you who are thinking this. Yeah, yeah, but what about the questions I still have? What about the questions I still do not have answers for? Sometimes things I learn in science class feels like it gives me more questions about God than it answers. What about that? Now, this is where some of our amazing questions come into play. Because I start thinking about these and I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know answers to these questions. Right? Do mermaids exist and could they be saved? I don't know. I tell my daughter yes because it makes her happy. But like, I don't know. Right? Um, do other animals have religions? I don't know. I don't know. Um, right? Why doesn't the Bible talk about dinosaurs? Uh, can Jesus get out of a black hole? Can science prove the existence of God? Does God like aliens? Can a robot ever fall in love or have faith? You know, some of these questions I might have a little bit of a better answer for, and some of these I'm like, I don't know. Right? And to be totally honest, I had a lot of these questions, not these exact ones, but similar questions when I was your age, when I was in high school and middle school. And I'll never forget, it was just one of these things that I was like, here's the deal. If God is real, then at least he knows the answers to these questions. And I may not ever know the answers to all, the, all of my questions, right? I'm, I'm not infinite. I'm, I don't have all the knowledge in the world. I don't know everything. But, but God does, and so if I follow him over time, you know, in theory, I'll be able to learn things that are true about God, and he's going to be able to answer some of these questions that I have. And so I, I did this test when I was in high school. I did this test with God. I was like, God, if you're real, um, then it's going to make sense, because everything in creation and how things work and the logic of this world will all point to you, because if you're real, you, you're not going to be hiding, right? Um, it, it, there's going to be evidence of of God's existence. And so, but if you're not real, it'll be pretty easy after a while to prove that you're not. And so I, uh, I did this test with, I was like, man, if God's real, then he can handle all these really hard questions I ask about Christianity and about my faith. And so I actually pretended like I wasn't a Christian for a while. And I was just like, you know, badgering um, the, the, the Christianity with these really hard questions that I didn't know answers to. And I would just be like, man, if there's an answer to this, then that would really help. If there's not an answer to this, well, then maybe this faith is fake. And, and so I, I, I really did. I, I kind of like put my faith on the shelf, and I stood back, and I took like an AK-47, and I was like, boop, 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 with all the hard questions I could think of, right? And you know what wound up happening? Not a single one of them punctured a hole in my faith. Not a single one of them. I began to realize, like, oh, my word, I don't know all the answers, but, but, I, but this faith has substance to it. Turn my microphone off. This faith has substance to it. It's based on a real person, a real, a real God, a real, a real creator who made things. And as I'm beginning to learn about this world, I realize that it points me straight to him. Truth of the matter is, there's always going to be something that challenges you to question the experiences you've had in your faith. Maybe you think about things logically. You know facts, right? You know things, if, if this equals this equals this, and therefore it's naturally going to lead to this. And you, you have a logical thing, and like something like faith, like things that are outside of things that you can test in the physical world, right? Things you can perceive with your senses, and it's like outside of this, and you're like, I can't explain a miracle away. Like, I don't know how to like comprehend how some of these things work, right? Or maybe you've had a different experience. You had difficult things happen to you, and you're just like, God, is, is he even there? 
If God was there, I feel like he'd want to prevent this really bad thing from happening to me. Is God even there? Why did he let this thing happen? Or maybe you're someone who isn't sure about God at all, and because of that, you've got a lot of questions about faith. And let me just say this. All of those positions to come from are totally acceptable here. Why? Because God can handle your questions. Maybe you're sitting here and you're like, my faith is great. I don't have any questions, right? I've never questioned my faith ever. And I think for you, the idea of something challenging what you believe really just seems impossible. No matter what your experience is, I can promise you this about your future, that challenge is coming. It might happen in science class. It might happen in your own wondering it might happen when you're talking to some of your friends or you hear something that one of your friend's parents say and you're like, I don't know the answer to a question like this or something else. Maybe it will happen because of a difficult loss or a circumstance or it might just happen randomly. And whatever it is, there's going to be a point at which you encounter a question or a challenge to why you believe what you believe. Can I be maybe the first to tell you? Hopefully I'm not the first, but like, it's okay to have those questions. God's not like offended that you have a question about him. Right? If, if you're like, I don't know the answer to this. I've got this question. Yeah, exactly. He's not going to be super upset about it. The fact of the matter is he loves revealing himself to you. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a passage in Scripture, John chapter 9. John chapter 9, if you have a Bible, I'd highly recommend you turn to John chapter 9. If you don't own a Bible, my goodness, I would love to give you one for free. If you do own a Bible, my goodness, please bring your Bible to youth group. It's a great thing to do. By the way, tomorrow is National Bring Your Bible to School Day. Um, and so just throwing that one out there, National Bring Your Bible to School Day. If you're homeschooled, that's going to be really easy for you. Um, but you'd be surprised, you'd be surprised, I was just talking to someone tonight who daily, regularly lives out her faith at her school, and somebody in her life went through something really hard and was like, I know God's trying to get my attention, and the first person she thought of was, guess who? Someone who lives her faith out publicly. Bringing your Bible to school is a great way to kind of demonstrate that. So, Bring your Bible to youth group, bring your Bible to school. Anyways, John chapter 9, we're going to look at something that one of Jesus' disciples, his name was John, okay, and uh, he, he experienced and walked with Jesus as he was living here on earth. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I got to imagine if I was walking every day with Jesus, like I went on sleepovers with Jesus, I went on mission trips with Jesus, I went out to lunch with Jesus, right? Like, I would, if, I, if that was my experience, you got you to gotta believe that I would be asking him some questions, right? And then you see Jesus do things that are unexplainable, like healing people or like, casting out demons, and you're like, oh my word, I have so many questions. Where would you start? Would you start asking Jesus, how? How'd you do that? Would you start asking Jesus, why? Man, what, what, what was going on there, Jesus? Would you start asking Jesus, who? Like, who'd you learn that from? John chapter 9, starting in verse 8, here's what happens. Jesus encounters this guy, and it's an amazing thing, Okay? Um, basically, Jesus heals a guy of blindness. He's blind. Jesus puts some mud on his eyes. Says, go take a bath in this pool over here. That's the short version. Okay, he comes back. The guy washes it off. And just like that, the guy could see. And it was amazing. And everyone's like, oh, what? John chapter 9, verse 8. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging. Why do you think he was begging? Anybody? Yeah, go ahead. Begging for someone to help him. Yeah, for sure. Why? What were you going to say? Yeah, why do you think the guy was begging? He was blind. It's kind of hard to do a good job at your work if you're blind. Right? It's, he wasn't living in 2022 where there was a lot of handicap accessible jobs, right? He was living in 0002, okay, or whatever it was. And so he 
did not have the, the, the opportunity to work a job. He was blind. He needed the generosity from other people. So he was a public spectacle, right? Everybody saw him begging. They're like, that's the beggar, dude. We know him. And then all of a sudden, he's up walking around, and you can see. And people are going like, verse 8, his neighbors and those who formerly seen him begging, isn't this the same guy who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others says, nah, doppelganger, just looks like him, right? Uh, but he himself says, no, 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 I'm the guy. And they're like, um, how, notice that question, how, 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 how were your eyes opened? And he replied, with a who? He doesn't answer the how question. You see that? He's like, the man they called Jesus put some mud on my eyes, and um, he told me to go to Siloam and wash. And so I went, and I washed, and then I could see. And they're like, where is he? You notice that everybody's asking him, how did this happen? This is a pretty understandable question. I mean, if I had seen an encounter a guy who was, I knew he was blind, right? He's got the walking stick around. He's got like a, a guide dog or something, right? And he's got the, the neon vest so that people kind of see him walking around and they know he's blind or whatever. And all of a sudden, like, I see him driving a car. I'd be like, um, police, blind guy driving a car. What's going on? They pull him over and he could totally see. He passes all the vision tests. And I'm like, um... Uh, what eye doctors you go to? Like, how'd this happen? Like, what, 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 uh, yeah, did you just eat all the carrots in the world? Like, how did this happen? But the guy did not, yeah, but the guy answered their question of how by talking about a who. He told him it was Jesus. And I guess that answer was not good enough for these people, right? Because they decided to take their uh, friend who used to be blind to a group of Pharisees. They're the really smart, uptight religious people at the time. And they met the man who was no longer blind. And now we're going to skip to verse 17. They turned to him and said, what do you have to say? It was your eyes he opened. And the guy says he was a prophet. And the Jews didn't believe that he had been blind. And he had received his sight. They're like, you were faking it for like 30 years. You just had your eyes closed, right? <laughs> Which sounds pretty ridiculous. Like, why would you do that? So they sent for his parents. They sent for his parents. And they're like, this is your son. Is, is he was the one born blind? How is it can he can see? How is this even possible? And the Pharisees focused on how this guy got healed. Because this explanation didn't match up with how they thought things worked. And it made them real suspicious. So John continues with the story. He continues telling us about this. Look down at verse 24. A second time they called the man who had been born blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. And he replied, I, what, they're talking about Jesus, by the way. Whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind. Now I can see. What I love about this guy is he doesn't say to the Pharisees, well, I know everything about Jesus, God, and faith, and that's why I believe. And think about it. In fact, this guy is now a full believer in Jesus, and he hardly knows anything about Jesus. Instead, you know what he does? He admits what he doesn't know. I think this can be really helpful for us. He's like, I, hey, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. Which, by the way, is, a, is starting off with saying, I barely know anything about Jesus. To say, I don't know if he's a sinner or not, Right? He's like literally saying, I hardly know anything about Jesus. All I know is, and then he talks about what he does know. And here's what I think we can learn from this. We don't have to know everything about Jesus to follow him. We can still have really good, tough questions and follow Jesus, right? We may not be able to explain everything or every possibility that, that happens in this world. We may not have answers to all the questions that arise that either we think about or somebody else asks us. And I know sometimes that can be frustrating. That was one of the biggest, hardest things I had to wrestle with when I was in middle school and high school. I was like, God, how come you just don't tell me all the things? How come you just like, you just, you know, like watch me sit and try to figure this out on my own? Gah! Like, come on, God. Because while science can explain a lot, and, and it, it, I love science. I think you should be a good scientist in some aspects, right? You should continue to learn more. But it can't explain everything, especially sometimes the thing God, things God does in our lives. 
All right, that's where faith comes in. And, and we can have a lot of questions about science and faith. And the truth of the matter is, there are some things that are always going to remain a mystery. And that's okay. We can have questions and still follow God. You were created for a relationship with God. God is not a math problem to figure out. He is a person to live your life with. Amen? Amen. And he wants to not just reveal everything about how, he wants to reveal who. He wants to reveal himself to you. So we can have questions and still follow God. Follow God. So I, I want to encourage you to do two things. Number one, keep asking questions. Can you do that? Right, just like you did, um, we've encouraged you to do in your life groups. I want you to keep asking questions about things you don't understand. It's okay to ask questions that you're like, I don't know if I'll ever get the answer to. Can Jesus get out of a black hole? How would you even go about proving that? I, I don't even know. But it's okay, right? In, th in those circumstances, some of these things, the pursuit of trying to figure out, right, do, why doesn't the Bible talk about dinosaurs? As you begin to pursue a question like that, you might actually find an answer. And God might actually reveal himself to you in the process a little bit more. So I'd encourage you, number one, keep asking questions. Number two, then take one step toward God. Don't wait till you have all the answers. Don't, don't wait until you know everything. Keep moving towards God even right now. This week, take one step, just one simple step in walking in relationship with God. If you already have a relationship with God, maybe for you that means spending more time with Him this week, or even trying to reach out to Him. Maybe you, you're, you, you reach out to Him in prayer, or you start journaling certain things, or maybe you switch some of your playlists to worship music so you can interact with Him on a regular basis, right, while you're listening to music, or you spend like, you know what, I'm going to get up like 30 minutes early, or 10 minutes early, or 15 minutes early, and read the Bible during that time, or, or I'm going right, to do a Bible reading plan with some of my friends or my life group, and, and we're going we're gonna to learn something together about God. I'd encourage you, this week, take one step closer to God, because you know what you're going to discover? Even though you don't know everything about how, when you move towards God, you're going to learn a little bit more about who. You're going to learn a little bit more about the God who wants to know you, you can still have great questions and follow God. Um, as you head to life groups, we're going to do something a little bit unique, and I want to encourage, uh, can, can I get the life group leaders to help me out with this one? Um, uh, Andrew, can you grab all those sticky notes over there on the shelf? Awesome. And we're going to give each one of you a sticky note, and Sydney is going to explain the rest. If you don't know Sydney, Sydney's wonderful. She's one of our interns this year. Everyone say, hi, Sydney. So as they're handing out the sticky notes, I have one question for you guys. If you were standing, if Jesus was right in front of you right now, what is one question that you would ask him? If you, and <laughs> you guys don't have to yell them out right now. You're going to get a chance to talk about those in your life group, but just write them out on your sticky note, and we're going to put them um, in the window over there when you're done writing that question down. Um, and one thing that's really cool that you'll find is that every single person here has questions that they want to ask, that they, things that they need to ask of God still. Um, and Brant and I even still have questions. And actually, the fact that you have questions is a sign that you are growing in your faith. It's not um, a negative thing. So write down, if you could ask Jesus one question, what would it be?